Talk Pro. Uh, I have just a brief introduction to uh, this uh, video. Uh, most of it is going to be a chart, uh, a statistical chart that will show you a lot of things. I would advise you to do two things. First of all, watch it on uh, a larger screen because otherwise the numbers will be very small. And secondly, you have to do some study on this um, chart. It's a, a marvelous uh, chart for a coach. But remember this, it's a tool. It's science. Coaching is art. You have to keep that in mind. So we'll go to the chart now and uh, I will be explaining it over the chart. Well, uh, this is the NICS evaluation sheet, and uh, they're right now at the at the point of this sheet. They were eight and nine, uh, eight eight wins and nine losses, and they probably should be better than that. But we'll point point a few things out here. But the big thing I want you to do is to study this sheet. And I want you to, uh, to uh, realize that you could have a sheet just like this uh, for your team uh, uh, any time during the season. And you could actually have it game by game uh, so that you had this information. There's a lot of information on this, on this sheet. Uh, but let's start with the, one of the key things that I look at right away is the rating. Now I'm not going to go into the uh, how the rating is formed. Um, I mean I've used it for 30-40 years uh, and it's uh, it is very accurate. Uh, so that's the first place that I go when we're looking at players, which players are performing. This rating will tell you and it's based not on scoring, it's based on who is making the biggest uh, contribution to the team. Uh, and I highlighted uh, some of them uh, that are problems um, or mostly they're problems, but otherwise they're uh, things a coach has to make a decision on. Let's take a look at Noah right here. Uh, 23.83 for a center is uh, is a good score, but not a, a, a very strong score. If you look on the side, I don't use I don't do this normally, but for you guys because you don't know uh, the what what is a good score and what isn't. It, it depends on position. So I did this for you. Uh, taking just like if you're going to school, A, B, C, D, and F uh, are, are what you what they would be getting uh, according to their position, uh, and and so as a uh, as a uh, center, he he is a B. He could be an A with just a, a one little change, and that is right here. He's six for 21 on free throws, shooting 29%. I mean, he should be at least shooting 11. Uh, and you'd be surprised at this point how that would bring that score up. He would go to an A is my, my uh, guess. Uh, this column here is streamlining this column. Uh, and we we uh, have a different index for it, uh, but this tells you who is actually, uh, regardless of this rating, who is contributing the most to winning and and losing. Uh, no one should be higher. Uh, you know, I I don't have any doubt about that. It's just free throws. But these, these two guys are very interesting. They don't get the minutes that Noah gets. But Noah doesn't get a lot of minutes either, 337. 
Uh, but these are good scores. Uh, uh, this is an A for uh, this guy's position. And though he plays a lot of Noah's position. Uh, and this is a very good score for that uh, this guy's position. But notice all of them are high except for Noah. I mean, he's pretty high. But these guys are very high uh, considering their position. They're making strong contributions uh, to winning. Uh, and so this is, a, you know, I don't even have a per game scoring average on this chart. Uh, I very seldom even look at the points, but here are the points. By the way, this part of the sheet is their per minute uh, contribution. Uh, in other words, um, it, this guy is scoring uh, 0.67 points for every minute he plays. Um, you can reverse that, and a lot of coaches do. They show the minutes uh, differently, but it's it's all relative. Uh, it's just what you uh, you want to how you want to adjust the rating. Well, uh, that's what you look at. I asked you, you know, do you know who your best players are? Well, if you look at uh, points per game, you probably would not recognize this guy, this guy, and this guy. Uh, but in their contribution, they're making a very strong contribution to their team. This is a guy you would probably notice. Uh, is because of his points, but uh, this uh, I gotta explain this column too. I this is the same as effective field goal percentage, but when I began adding that, uh, they did not have an effective field goal percentage. I recognized it, so I gave it a value. Uh, of uh, and the ideal value uh, uh, value is above one point, uh, but just consider this as what this says is this is how many points uh, he he scores for every attempt. Uh, he does not score one point for every attempt. Uh, this guy scores quite high for every attempt. So he's, and if, if you had this uh, correlated to an effective uh, percentage, which is now, you know, the popular thing, but this says the same thing, uh, he would be very high uh, also in that area. Um, so this is what you can get from, you know, individuals. Uh, and you should know this. It, it, you'd be surprised a lot of coaches are playing the wrong guys more too many minutes and uh, not giving minutes to the right guys uh, that uh, I mean, these two guys don't get a lot of minutes uh, neither does o uh, uh, Noah but uh, Noah gets a lot of criticism in the New York papers uh, other than his free throw shooting he's he's doing a good job for the minutes he gets the, and the same is true of these guys. So, you know, as a coach, you're in a position, knowing this, to make an adjustment. These guys should play more. Uh, and, um, and it might mean changing some guy's position. Like this guy might, you, you know, he, he goes between three and four. I'm not sure in the triangle he couldn't play two uh, and get some more power into the lineup. But that's a coach's decision. Now, also, you got to consider uh, this is science. There's also an art uh, of knowing, for example, uh, Derek Rose at point nine zero, uh, which brings him down to a fifteen, which is average for his position. Um, um, but I think you have to at this point say, well, uh, you know, I'm going against the uh, science because you, in your mind, you have, you understand that this guy can be a lot better and he will be a lot better. So you continue to play him minutes.
um, where uh, maybe somebody else at that position would do is got a better uh, rating. Uh, there is an art and a science uh, to what your decisions are. Now they're eight and nine. Why? Uh, you know they've got a pretty good team, in my opinion, with these guys if they're playing up to par. Here's a reason right here. 1.04 OER or point for possession is very good offensively, but this is very, very bad defensively. So let's take a look at that. The difference is, and uh, they're scoring 0.99 points per attempt. This team is scoring 1.01, their opponents. Uh, you know, I can I would guess at this, but I can prove it, and I have been uh, doing it with the Knicks. Um, this is due to one simple thing: they don't contest shots. They are they are a good shot blocking team. Ninety five for seventeen games is good. It's a seven percent. Uh, this is a percent of their attempts that are blocked. That's very good. Uh, but they don't contest shots out on the floor very well. If this guy le leaves the floor, they don't block shots. Uh, I mean, this guy right here, if he leaves the, the floor, they don't contest shots nearly. I mean, block shots as well. Uh, so the problem is their defense. Th this is a very pathetic score. But let me show you something else. That that as a coach you've got to you've got to uh, look at. They're giving up 446 um, free throws a game, and uh, that's an average down here. Is the averages per game? Uh, they're averaging 26 free throws a game. This has a dramatic effect on 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 their on their play. What they're doing is they are accepting fouls because they can't defend people. You know their coach has got to go to work and uh, and start showing them now how that they can. They've got to. They have to defend some people. If you look at them on films, they give up. Uh, if a guy starts to drive, they give up or foul them. This is hurting their team a lot uh, because it provides, it takes away their fast break opportunities because they can only get fast breaks from defensive rebounds, uh, and uh, it 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 challenges that when they're give when they're put, uh, getting you getting rebounds after a after a, a free throw everybody set it makes difficult it makes it very difficult uh, so and here's another place 26 percent offensive rebounds now that's gotten to be a, a a decent number in the NBA and the reason is and I've done a study on this and I'll show you some but it affects winning a lot um, because they're giving up a, uh, by not offensive rebounding their their opponents are getting the uh, the best possession next to steals uh, but 74% of the time, that's very high. If that moves up to 29%. This moves down to 71%. And that is going to improve their defense. Uh, I don't know why teams give up on the opportunity to score off offensive rebounds. They don't even try anymore. Uh, and I'm surprised that uh, the Knicks are doing that because uh, when Phil Jackson coached, he had good offensive rebounding teams. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, that would make a big difference uh, to them overall. And I want to move over here. Uh, there's some key areas you got to look at. Your, your two-point field goal percentage is very critical because you can see the number of shots. Uh, I mean, 
uh, th this is an area that needs to be improved. They need to contest shots, but they don't very well. Um, even this guy right here, you know, he's over seven foot. He's huge. Uh, he contests shots. He does that well. But for some reason, and I've ran into this before, when he gets a good contest, they still score. Uh, I mean, he, the, his contest should create more misses. Uh, but there's something in the way he does it. I think it's because he gets there too late. But he contests, he tries. But he is not effective with his best contests. Uh, so, you know, that's why they're shooting 50%. Uh, on twos, which is one of the main indicators of defense, uh, is this number right here. If you could bring that down to 47%, they're probably uh, a team that's, you know, winning 12 to 14 games by now. The other key that we look at is this one right here. This is a combination of defensive rebounds and steals. We have shown that the team that has the best uh, difference in this uh, number, combination of defensive rebounds and steals, wins the game 79% of the time. This is too close. You know, it's almost like it isn't a factor. And the reason is right up here again. Uh, they could, the, because steals are pretty even, uh, 128 and 125. Um, but if they were getting more, uh, uh, the opponents were getting uh, uh, less defensive rebounds, um, this, would, this would bring, this is a pretty good score offensively. Um, but you got to bring, they have to bring that down. Uh, they've got to improve this area right here. It's, this is kind of unusual. Uh, their difference in rebounding with their opponents is only one. It's the type of uh, rebound. Uh, they need to cut down the opponent's defensive rebounds, which would create a difference here that was more positive for them. So everything in this chart uh, is centers around uh, defense. Now the papers in New York are making a big thing about the defense, but they don't know. Uh, they're looking at things like uh, the, you know, they can't guard the pick and roll. Well, that's, not, that's not the case. Uh, they don't do a very good job of that because uh, they let they hit the screen and quit um, but what the real problem is uh, in these this area here giving up too many defensive rebounds to their uh, to their opponent not contesting shots if they just did well in the three pillars of defense what I call the three pillars of defense they'd contain the driver a little better without having to, to get help all the time. And if they can cast shots and they'd rebound, their defensive rebounding is okay. Uh, it's just that they, they're they letting their opponents have just as good a defensive rebounding. So th these are the decisions you make as a coach, but this sheet will tell you where the problems are and what they're doing well. Uh, they're a good offensive team, even with Rose not playing up to his potential offensively. He's still got a decent score because he does a lot of other things. The really great players uh, have a good score here. You know, Michael Jordan was phenomenal. He All the time he played in his prime, he, his rating was in the 30s. 31, 32, 33, um, unbelievable. Now, when he got older, then it came down a little bit. It's to be expected. The other guy is John Stockton. He never got old. 
uh, you know, he, he was a point guard that was in uh, having this kind of numbers, 24, 25 rating all through his career. And even when he was 40 some years old, at the end of his career, he was still getting, uh, had a, a ratings of 23, 24. He was phenomenal. Um, Michael Jordan was. I, I, I mean, for the position he played, um, he was scoring much better in his rating than the centers, who really have more opportunity uh, to to have bigger scores. Well, I want you to look at this, study it, because it's worth it. I could I could spend hours uh, on this chart, so uh, I'll leave it at that and leave it up to you. Uh, to uh, bring yourself to studying this chart and you'll learn a lot.